name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions. We're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 2,355 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Welcome back, everyone. Today, before we get started, I'd just like to mention that Aspen Now is now on Instagram trying to integrate a little fun into the learning process and uh, hopefully provide you some cool imagery from where I live, which is Miami, Florida. Today, what we're going to be talking about is overrides uh, for forms in a domain separated environment. So what is an override? And before we get into it, let's just take a look at our domain hierarchy here. Override is basically a way that we can tell a parent domain that the child domain is going to do something different in terms of the way the form appears on the screen. Now, overrides can also take place uh, with business rules, uh, client scripts, UI policies, etc. They're most commonly uh, a little bit of a nuisance, though, uh, especially for people who are just getting started with domain separation. Uh, with the forms. So I just want to show today how we can create an override in a uh, in on the core company table um, and then what we'll do is we'll clear it out and then um, you know we'll do that maybe a couple of times so that way you can you see the methodology here. So as you can see here we have um, a couple of uh, forms here in different domains on the core company table. So right now I am in forms and the way to get there, just type in forms here. You'll see here system UI and then forms. So we'll get to this in just a second, but we're going to go to the core company table right now. Um, as you can see, I have one open, but in order to get to the core company table, type in core company. And here we are. And then we'll just select one here. We'll notice here that I'm in the global domain. Fantastic. All right, so right now we have, it looks like an override going on in customer A and top Acme. So, and also top for that matter too. So out of the box, everything's gonna be at the global level. And then the onus will be on you to create overrides, uh, probably in top, or I know some people work in MSP, but generally um, in my experience, I work in the top domain as an admin. Again, this will be up to your organization on how you uh, function in terms of wh where you work as developers. So if I want to create an override, pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the form here and then let's see, where do we have them? Customer A, Acme top. All right. So maybe I want to create one. Oh, I don't know. Let's go into maybe this customer C and let's see if anything changes here. All right, looks like that's, was that the same? I don't know, let's just take a look here. Let's go back to, let's go to customer A and see what's a little bit different. Customer A appears to be the same. Let's go to Kingfisher. And it's good to toggle these sometimes just to see what, it, what exactly is going on. Okay, so I don't know. Kingfisher, maybe we'll try to create a domain override there. So. I'm going to go into form layout and sometimes you're going to do this by accident and here's why as you can see here and for those of you that like to work in several tabs at once i apologize for the brightness here let me see if i can get this let's see if i get the options here try to turn the brightness up okay that looks decent all right so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to create looks like an active field there not creating but adding to I should say and I'll put the country country underneath there then I'm going to take out these three now we'll click save and now what you're going to see here is that we have business rules that run and it's going to tell you there's a new form section here um, and it's overriding Kingfisher and then we have, um, let's see, a new form and form section. So it looks like um, a whole bunch of stuff happened. 
And if it's your first time, you're probably going to freak out and say, okay, I'm not sure what I did. Or you're not going to freak out. And then later on, uh, someone else is going to freak out when they say, hey, where'd all this stuff go? Because the form looks different. So now if we go up one level to MCT, which is the, the parent of Kingfisher, and give it a second for the change, we'll see here, all this stuff came back, right? And we'll notice our country isn't here, the active isn't there, etc. So what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to go and try to find it first. And the way we'll find it is we're going to come in here to forms where we just were. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this and let's do this again let's click on forms and remember our go-to move and i mentioned this in a couple other videos i think on domain sep our go-to move is always going to be to go to global if we can if we if we know the domain where the override was created fine we can go there we can go find it but probably the the best way to do it is to go right here to expand domain scope and sometimes and you'll see it right here. Here's Kingfisher. Sometimes what you can do is just sort on created because, you know, maybe one of your colleagues will come to you and say, like, hey, man, I just, I don't know, I think I messed up this form or whatever. Say, okay, always have this created column in there. So that way you can say, okay, well, the last one was done by, and then here's who was done um, by and when. So it looks like we have this um, customer account right here. And it looks like it's overriding the other one on the, uh, or excuse me, you know, the override name is customer account. So it's going to this, this same table right here, right? So at this point, what we want to do is generally you can clear this thing out if you want to. All right. And now what I'll tend to do is even before I clear out that override, is I like to back these things up sometimes. And the reason why is because maybe I killed the wrong one. And if I killed the wrong one, well, that's going to suck because then I don't have to redo all that work. But in fact, let's just go into one of these forms and see what's going on here. Because chances are the form is going to have some form sections that go along with it. And sure enough, here we go. We have our form sections too. And even if we, let's just say we go into one of these things. Let's click, uh, I clicked on the domain, I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to go into the SysUI section here, I believe. All right, now we're going to see here, see how we have another related list called form sections? That kind of um, throws a monkey wrench into things sometimes for people and that there are actually two tables named form sections. So if we take a look at um, right here we're in forms. We can tell right here SysUI form. But then we're going to ha have SysUI section right here. And then if we open this up in a new window, SysUI form section. Okay. So yeah, basically this is a way to recycle the, the sections. It's kind of what a, you know, the functionality appears to do here. So I'm going to expand this domain scope. You see how all that stuff just appeared right there? Okay, so that that right there shows you that like you could even be in this form section right here. You're gonna see three. You open up the next list, there was nothing there. But now when you expand the domain scope, you're gonna see there are five actually. Okay, so at this point, what do we want to do? Do we wanna get rid of the form altogether or do we wanna get rid of the section? Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of the form but before I do that, I'm going to back this thing up. So I'm going to right click and do a show matching on Kingfisher. We'll see, I'll, I'll, I have here three. And then the table I want is customer account, not incident or problem. So now if I want to back this up, what I'm going to do is export to XML. I'm going to click download throws it down there nicely. Remember when you're backing stuff up, if this were to have stuff in the related lists, you're going to want to back that stuff up too. So all this crap here. And then if there's anything in the related list for these, then you want to back those up too. I know it's kind of a pain. That's just what I do. You don't have to do it. It's fine. So now I'm going to get rid of this thing. 
I'm gonna hit delete. Okay. So now let's try to go back to our let's see if I can find that form here. Alright, looks like yeah, here we are. See customer account. I'm gonna reload this. And we'll notice I'm an MCT now, not Kingfisher. So now if I go back to Kingfisher, let's see what probably nothing happens just yet. I'm hoping anyway. Alright. This thing going to move for me. Country still here. Active is still here. One more thing we have to do. We have to run cash. Cash. Dot do. Now it's going to clear the cash. And you have to do this with UI related stuff, I guess is the way to put it. But specifically for today's lesson, you're going to have to do this. If you're working in a domain separate environment, with forms and form sections that are messed up, you're going to want to clear the cache. And now when we come in here, now let's pay attention to country and active. Go ahead and refresh this. And voila, we'll see here. It looks like we don't have country anymore and everything was turned back to its uh, previous state. Okay, well, I think that's a good lesson about overrides and how we can, um, you know, basically get rid of them or at least the unwanted overrides that we accidentally create in a domain separate environment. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to go to the YouTube page. Uh, in the about section is my contact info. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.